Making a polished animation takes hundreds of people, millions of dollars, and huge studios. But what if I told you that the clips you're watching right now were created with free software and just a couple of buddies working together? <laughs> now you might be saying, Nico, those are just a couple of clips. There's no way you guys can do a whole episode of a cartoon. You aren't even traditional animators. Well, watch as we attempt to invent a new way of doing animation. And if we pull it off, you will see stories from small creators like us that you've never seen before. So we are currently filming anime, Rock, Paper, Scissors 2. Wait, filming an anime? Aren't you supposed to be drawing an anime? Also, you're probably wondering to yourself why I'm dressed up like a little kid. Let me give you a quick background here. So over the past year, there's been an explosion in machine learning for image generation. And it's been kind of a grassroots community-led thing rather than like a corporate development. We took a bunch of that and experimented with it, which culminated in a project that we made called Anime, Rock, Paper, Scissors. Shoot! It was basically a fan film slash parody of anime. But what was unique is that we used one of these machine learning image models called Stable Diffusion to convert real footage of ourselves on a green screen into cartoonified versions of ourselves. And people really respond to the story and we were decently successful in translating the anime style. The thing is, we've always wanted to make a full episode of an anime. Not just a YouTube short, but a whole episode with a full story and all that kind of stuff. And we want to make that happen with Anime Rock, Paper, Scissors 2. I'm super excited. We already did the hard part, which is like the real acting of the voice acting. So this is literally just us being puppets all day and playing around. The first Rock, Paper, Scissors, while it was visually cool, there's also a lot of technical shortcomings. The faces get really wonky at parts. The style gets weird at parts. And it kind of looked more like a video filter than an actual proper cartoon. And this time we wanted to push beyond that. This time, we need to transform these characters. So to test if that's possible, we are shooting the first scene of Anime Rock, Paper, Scissors 2, where we are looking at the, the princes when they are young children. And that means, well, either we film with kids or we use the promise of this new technology and we film ourselves and we turn ourselves into those characters as kids. They say, uh, never film with animals or children. So we're using machine learning to eliminate jobs from children. I know, I know, people might get upset, you know, eliminating all those jobs for kids, you know, getting rid of that child employment, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. What we're filming on the green screen, me in this costume, it's not just gonna be the same thing, but filtered. I need to transform, my, my jawline needs to change, this wig needs to look like real hair. I need to transform into a character, not just be redrawn with lines around my face. We don't really know if any of this is going to really work. This is all theoretical right now. We actually haven't done it. This is effectively our test. If it works, then the whole project is a green light, and we're going to attempt to make a full episode of our very own anime. I don't know that this is gonna work with Nico with the beard. We didn't, we didn't do any tests on a bearded man as a boy. My fear is that we're gonna have a lot of weird AI artifacts on Nico's character from the beard. And if we can't make that work, then this day of shooting is kind of ruined and the video itself might not work. So uh, we'll see how that works out. Nico, this beard, this beard issue. Issue. So you're worried about like having a baby face? Have you seen the Adventure Time video that we did on Corridor? I have not shaved since this video. Since 11 years ago? <laughs> Look, no, no, if it didn't work, this beard was gonna go. I'm more interested in making a good video than keeping my beard. But I'm also interested in using the world's most advanced computer science to not have to shave. <laughs> <It's a yes. laughs> All right, so I'm gonna start by showing you some still images converted using everything we've learned since the first video. Yeah, here's you that in looks, style. That's, that is so stylistically face. different than like the first anime Rock, Paper, Scissors. Like, it looks like a cartoon. But, Nico, so if we take those settings and run a video of you through and apply some light compositing, this is what we get. Ooh, look at that, it worked. And look, your mouth, like you can read the mouth movements. It's like a little, it, wow. it's a little wobbly in the sense that like it's a real motion of a person. It's working. And there's still some work left to do here, but. I mean, this is super promising. Like this is such a, this is like a full body deep fake. You know, Nico, it would have been easy to shave your beard 
but in not wanting to have a baby face, you actually pushed us into a new frontier of technology here. Hey, what can I say? I'm a great leader, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it worked. My beard is gone. This means we can green light the project. It means we can go and move forward and make rock, paper, scissors too which is actually pretty daunting considering how huge this project is. By our count, the second rock, paper, scissors will have 400 shots. The first one had 80. The second rock, paper, scissors will have seven characters. The first one had two. The second rock, paper, scissors has a whole bunch of environment changes. The first one only had one. So there's a lot of things we have to figure out. So if you look at Rock, Paper, Scissors 1, that was us experimenting. It was us basically doing kind of like a fan film parody of anime, specifically like 90s anime, and also testing this technology to see if it would work. And when we made anime Rock, Paper, Scissors 1, we used frames from the movie Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust to kind of create our style. A lot of people levied criticisms at us for using the Vampire Hunter D images. Now, if you look specifically at the style of Rock, Paper, Scissors 1, if you look at the frames, they don't actually look 100% like Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust. There's certainly like some DNA in there. But one of the problems with Rock, Paper, Scissors 1 is that it's just kind of a generic look. It doesn't have its own style and it changes throughout. The faces get drawn and interpreted a little bit differently. If we're going to make our own episode of a cartoon, that is our own thing, we need to fix that. You need to be able to see the characters clearly as a style that only exists in the Rock, Paper, Scissors universe. And it needs to be consistent. So when you see the character in different scenes from different angles, it still feels like it's the same character drawn by the same artist. So with real cartoons, they actually have a way to fix this through something called a model sheet. And basically they outline how the character should be drawn from different angles, what the proportions are. And this is given out to artists so they all can draw the character in a consistent way. In theory, if we do something similar for Rock, Paper, Scissors 2, we should also be able to define a look for our characters that can then consistently be applied to them. And for this, I have a longtime artist friend I'm going to reach out to, and he's going to help us design the look for Rock, Paper, Scissors 2 to create these character model sheets. And if successful, we should be able to define our own style for this episode. Hi, Josh. It's me, your longtime buddy, Nico. <laughs> <laughs> What were some of the key aspects of the style that you tried to develop? What would you say are your signature traits? The things that I tended to exaggerate were cheekbones, chins. You got angular features that looked like you could grate cheese on them. <laughs> um, and obviously exaggerated eyes. Probably the most prominent of all, brows. Everything was a crush downward. I'm not traditionally an anime artist, so studying everything from Vampire Hunter D to Gundam, like getting to push those characteristics, those personalities to an extreme, that's so satisfying to do. <laughs> wow. Uh, I'm just realizing, I think I filled two sketchbooks. <laughs> As an artist, you have a computer that is looking at your drawings and in learning how to apply them to video. And how does it feel being on that spectrum of technology? The AI that we were, we've been exploring is beautiful and exciting while also being a little unnerving. And I feel like that's okay. You guys were kind enough to solicit me and actually compensate me. <laughs> but for all the thousands of artists out there that are also getting sucked up by that jet engine of the AI, but not being solicited or compensated or even told that it's happening. My heart goes out to them. The, the things that people are worried about, like cell animation to be so easy to create, we don't need animators anymore. That's true if you want to tell the most generic diluted story that's already been told a thousand times. If ever you want to be like original, tell a unique story, you need to feed it more original art and you need to just flood it because it needs to learn something new to tell a new story. And if you don't do that, it just starts to become kind of a generic amalgamation of all animation. The best possible thing for it is that creatives descend on it, ones that actually have moral compasses and passions and things they care about. Because this generation can provide the template that future generations use when asking themselves, like, what's the right way to handle this? Hey, all of you, go check out Level 1 Art Mage on Instagram, see some of Josh's work. Thanks for taking the time, Josh. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Have a good one. So Nico, you tell me that your friend Josh has made us some dope art. Yeah, we have a bunch of cool pictures, but also some pictures of your character. I have him right here, actually. Yeah, he's basically the handsome Squidward version of me. Yep. I feel like eyes are the most 
critical thing. That's the thing we have to kind of get right, especially after the last one. The eyes would be constantly changing colors. And yeah. Stuff. So we have our, our photo set, our data set that we did for you. So I took these photos as well as the art from Josh and I trained up a model and tried running it on these photos to turn these photos into basically the Josh's version of you. Oh, whoa. It's like his style, but shrink wrapped to my proportions. <laughs> right. The, the way the lips are drawn is exactly the same, like with like the corners of the mouth. Like it's doing a little bit of a line for the filtrum, but at the same time it also has the shading there. The cleft chin's coming through. It's also worth noting that like, it's taking his style and like bringing the costume to life through his style also. Like it's looking yeah. at how he's handling color and contrast and shape. I mean, you've got like the jaw of Henry Cavill and all these yeah. drawings. <laughs> Did I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> so this looks like it's pretty much ready to like run an entire video through it. Yeah, um, I tried. I tried doing that. I'm not gonna say anything. Just tell me what you think. Okay. Right. I mean, it's like, it's kind of coming through. I think because there's so much flicker, once you smooth it out, it just kind of goes back to being that like neutral cartoon style, you know? It's pretty rough. It's like, if I pause it, like this, the frame's not that bad. It's kind of getting Josh's eye shape. It is getting the cleft chin. But man, when I hit play, it is just like, it is all over the place. Every frame is different. The eyes are moving around. It's, it's like about where we were at, like the last week of the first one. And it was the best looking stuff we got for the original piece. I don't know, it doesn't feel like that big of a leap. Yeah, it doesn't look that good, does it? <laughs> but I don't want this to be just as good as the first one. I want it to be good. I want it to be really good. It's a sequel. It's gotta be, it's gotta be a leap. So, Nico, I feel like you've lost a bit of hope, but I sense there's still hope within you. Because I mean, if this wasn't working, I mean, we've, we've spent a ton of time on this. I feel like you'd be way more upset. <laughs> I don't know what we're going to do, but there's this thing called Warp Fusion, which is created by this guy named Alex. It was actually out when we were doing the first rock, paper, scissors, and I tried to use it, but it didn't have our, our reconstructed noise thing that we were using, so right. stuff would be warbly. Like I tried using it for our stuff, and I think our, our method was better, but I just saw this animation posted like yesterday by this, this guy named Enigmatic E. He has a YouTube channel, and it's very similar to what we're doing here. Take a look at this. Oh, whoa. Yeah. The face reads, the pose reads, like the lines and the detail, like there's a little bit of shift and shimmer, but like, this is really cool. Like if there's an animation like this, like this would be sick. The details carry through, even though it's such a huge departure from the original yeah. dude. It takes those details and carries them forward. Is that kind of what Warp Fusion is doing? Yeah, like Warp Fusion, it takes your image and it creates an optical flow pass, basically tracks where things move, and it morphs the previous frame using that optical flow to where they, the things would be in the current frame. So it kind of pulls data from the last frame and warps it to the current frame and then fills in like the gaps and things that need to be fixed, but you get a lot of the data from the previous frame. So rather than every frame being a new frame, you're actually kind of cheating the system and getting it to look back and keep some temporal consistency right. going. So I'm kind of at a point where like our only option if we want to make this project is to try something new. So I think I need to download Warp Fusion and learn how to use it. Damn, dude. That would be going back to the drawing board. Yeah. It Essentially, would be... like we would have to we would have to redo everything we've done already. We're like two months into this project almost and like we would have to throw out everything we've done. We'd have to change our whole pipeline. But if we have any hope of actually saving the project and making this work, I mean, from what I'm seeing, Warp Fusion looks like it might work. I mean, from that animation alone, it's worth a shot. Uh, I, I just, it's so much Python code and GitHubs. I'm just, I don't want to have to do it again. I think you have to lock yourself in this room, Nico. You have to lock yourself in this room, not leave until you have a usable result. I'll do whatever it takes, Steve. I'll do whatever it takes. So, Nico, you seem very excited to show this to us. So, you know, my buddy Josh, he's been doing a whole like art style for this. Mm -hmm. And we took that art style and we did some initial tests. You look at it, it's like, yeah, it's, yeah. it's not awful, but it's like on par with rock, paper, scissors. It, it feels similar to, yeah. yeah. Over this past weekend, I started experimenting with Warp Fusion. I actually spoke to Alex and asked him to implement reverse noise or reconstructed noise. I, no one knows what to call it, but basically when you derive the noise from the image. Sure, and, he, sure. and he did. And so I decided to jump back in and I'll show you the results. Wow, yeah, that's amazing. Cause that's a really tricky shot. That's like a, this is a big difference. <laughs>
Dude, look how look how nice this one is. Wow! 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 <laughs> this looks a thousand times better than everything else you've showed us. It's my this is my Halo moment. When you first played Halo, you know you're like. This is it. This, it can't get better. Like, this looks so good. Anyway, so I'm having that moment right here. <laughs> done. All right, we're done. We're done. That's the end. So you figured it out. Now we can do cartoons for real without any change. <laughs> it just, is it ever going to stop changing every week? Is that, are we ever going to get to that point? Well, the only thing that stops changing is us when we decide to stand still. I still can't get over the fact that like brand new visual effects technique is in our hands as open source free software. It's crazy. We're running this on our, our PCs. If you have a decent gaming PC, you can do this yourself. The thing is I had to experiment and figure out my way through this and a bunch of people helped me on Discord and various communities. It was amazing. I figured I could help out a little bit and just make a tutorial for anybody out there who wants to do what we're doing. If you want to try doing this, I have made a full tutorial series that's going on our website, CorridorDigital.com. We cover everything from fine tuning model to using more fusion to compositing and we'll also have a community challenge at the end plus a whole discord server it's gonna it be a good time if you want to learn how to do this corridordigital.com there's a free trial you can check it out all right so we still have hundreds of shots to figure out so let's get back to it jeez dude yeah that's a lot of red yeah i mean look more fusion worked it's a generational leap from what we were doing with rock paper scissors one However, this means starting over on all of our shots. All this red is stuff that we have to do. It's, it's a shot that needs to be run through Warp Fusion. It needs to be composited. Some shots have multiple characters, so you're running multiple characters through Warp Fusion. It's a lot of work. Imagine each one of these being like three to four hours. Dude, this deserves an anime reaction. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like a hell of a lot of work. It is a hell of a lot of work, and there's no two ways about it. But Nico, why can't I just type in anime movie and then it comes out? Why do we gotta do all this, Look, man? you can type in anime movie and something comes out, but no one cares what comes out when you type in anime movie. People only care when you give it direction and artistic intent and creativity. We'll do it on there. Let's get it done. So here's my solution. I'm going to attempt to build a online team of Warp Fusion artists. I was on the, the Warp Fusion Discord, a bunch of people were helping me out. A bunch of people are making cool art. A bunch of people are fans of Corridor. If we break out these shots, maybe we can have like a, a group of bounty hunters. Grab two or three shots, run them. They can get paid for those shots. I can reach out to Kytra. She's been super helpful. I can reach out to uh, Enigmatic E, Eric. Right, you know, yeah. the, the guy that basically taught me how to install Warp Fusion with his tutorials. Meanwhile, we will in parallel make a compositing team here in the studio. We know how to do that kind of stuff. We have a couple cool animators we could hire. Kenson, for example, helped us out in the first Rock, Paper, Scissors. We're probably gonna need somebody to also help manage the edit. Maybe Matias wants to come back in and help us out with that. This one we just solved by talking to people and trying to find people who are talented at doing this stuff to help us out. Wait, Nico, are you saying you're gonna hire artists? <laughs> Ironic, isn't it? <laughs> New technology doesn't make me want to slow down. It doesn't make me go like, oh, I guess I don't need help anymore. It makes me want to speed up. It's like, oh, I can do even more now, so let's do more. Yeah, we can That's make bigger and better stuff now. Let's do it. So we're all slowly making our way through the spreadsheet. This is where the fun begins, because we all get to be purely artists. We get to take these plates and sort of break them apart and put them back together again, combined with the backgrounds, which Sam captures in Unreal Engine, then converts into the anime style with Stable Diffusion. And then we add 2D hand-drawn elements and even 3D elements, which we add in the composition to add that kind of final layer of sauce. This creative process is accelerated greatly by our beastly workstation PCs provided by our friends over at Puget Systems. This is a subjective medium. We film a plate of someone, we put our filter on it, and that's cool, but the artistry in making these shots sell, whether they're like big impacts or big moments, that comes from the creativity of constructing a dynamic shot after the fact. You know, we're just working with two plates here, but like what else can you add to it? that really brings it to life. Like, it's really fun being incredibly bombastic and over the top with these shots. I think that's where the fun comes from, for me anyways. It's, it's so funny sometimes thinking about how ridiculous the concept is, these twins that play rock, paper, scissors, but I think it's also proof of how effective these techniques are. Despite the actual like plot of it, this method allows us to get the most over the top intensity, which helps you actually get invested in a preposterous story. 
And speaking of over-the-top intensity, this wouldn't be an episode of anime without an anime theme song. Luckily, we have a talented musician to provide the title track. So my name is David Maxim Mitic, and I'm a composer and a producer from Belgrade, Serbia. How is it trying to write an anime theme song? This was very, very fun for me. Like, there's so many animes that just like draw you in with their title track. Having a reference that you guys provided, it was easy. I would just like follow the concept that you guys already have. When listening to it, it still has your signature sound. Nice. <laughs> like, I don't know, there's something just about your, your writing. Then we take the vocals and then have the vocalist who goes by the name uh, Shihori translate the lyrics as well. She did a really good job too. She did an awesome job. You did the, the rest of the music yourself, right? I did. Uh, I got this incredible old synth module from like 1999, and it had so many of those like crazy early 90s synthesizer patches on it. But it even has like the dues from Metal Gear Solid. Really? <laughs> that, that was like yeah. my big excitement with doing some of the music here, putting in some of those like cheesy sounds to make it feel like a 90s anime. Once again, dude, I just I gotta thank you because the, the music is incredible. It's a hit. Nice. Where do we go to hear more of your stuff? Spotify, my website, all the regular places. All right, dude, well, have a great one. Bye-bye. All right, it's midnight. Big moment. All right. You see that last little red thing there? Each red clip means there's notes, and the last shot with notes has right. been Jules. dealt with. This is it. The last one. Oh, oh we did it. Is that all the shots? Every single shot in the piece is shippable. We could upload this now, and I would probably be okay with it, and I think everybody would enjoy it. A project's never done until you give up, but at least at this point, we could upload it. So everything from here on out is just us indulging in ourselves a little bit. So we do have the final bonus scene at the very end. I was thinking of a skit. Dean, tell me what you think. So every soldier is played by Jordan Allen in this piece. They're all like clones of each other. It's Jordan Allen is a soldier, and Jordan Allen is a peasant walks by and the Jalen soldier says, Oi, peasant! And he looks up, he's like, There's gonna be a big battle in episode three, but only if we get enough troops. And he's like, Well, how do I help? And he's like, You can sign up at quarterdigital.com. He's like, Okay! And then just cuts the two of them in guard uniforms, like, Hey, this is pretty nice! And that's like the end of the piece. Hi! <laughs> so, I don't know, that's our little like push to the website. If you wanna see an episode three, that's how you do it. Also, we have a full three part tutorial that covers in detail every single step of this process. So you can learn how to make cartoons using your camera and a green screen on your computer yourself. It's surprisingly accessible. Like, who would have thought cutting edge tech like this would be in our hands for us to be able to play with? There is something beautiful about something that would take the traditional studio hundreds of people and years could now be done by five friends with a little time on their hands who may not have the technical chops, like the knowledge of construction method and rendering, but they have a really satisfying story to tell and they want it to be heard. That's gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs>